Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at um, the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits, traits is going to be in the end, and GD match results of four funnel beaker individuals, um, A and S on survey 008, on survey 014, on survey 016, and on survey 017, named Jordan, Tyler, Jesse, and Eric respectively, that's the name I gave for them so that I could refer to them easier. Uh, Eric and Tyler are relatives, and all four individuals have I2Y DNA. Um, all four individuals are men. Let's begin. Let's begin with Jordan here. Jordan has got um, brown eyes, Greek shaped nose, and black hair. Actually, he's got very dark pigmentation despite having BH2. So he's got two derived variants in BH2, but he's still got dark pigmentation. Why is that? The reason he's got dark pigmentation is because he's got. Um, very exotic genotype, basically an SLC45A2, Ketel G, and even some variations that are pretty important in the OCA2 region. Uh, he does have one hunter gatherer, red hair, blue eyes, pale skin variant in IRF4. And with my eye shape predictor tool, it's predicting him to have Estonian, so uh, Northern European facial morphology, and wavy hair with my hair shape predictor tool. Now we're moving on to Jesse. Jesse's got blue eyes with amber center, Greek shaped nose, and blonde hair. Uh, he's got BH1 and BH2, BH3 is undetermined and he does not have BH4. He's got two hunter-gatherer blue eye and red hair and pale skin variants in IRF4. Uh, and this is actually the reason for his very high score in terms of uh, red hair category. He's still, the majority category is still blonde for him, but he does have a very high score for red hair and it's because of this genotype in IRF4. And he's da definitely got light skin if you look at his genotype in Keto G and Asip. When it comes to facial morphology, he's predicted to have South Asian actually eye shape, very interesting stuff. But South Asian eye shape isn't really any different from European eye shapes. And uh, the thing that matters here is like East Asian and Sub-Saharan African, right? Where he doesn't score any. And for uh, the hair shape predictor, his hair shape prediction is straight. Now we're moving on to Tyler. He's got hazel eyes, Greek or snub shaped nose, and brown hair. Wysek, if you remember, was actually predicting him to have brown eyes and brown hair. Uh, my Nashakot is predicting him to have hazel eyes instead. And um, he does have BH1. He's heterozygous for BH2. And he does not have BH3 or BH4. Based on his genotypes in SLC45A2, Keto G, SLC24A5, and Asip, he's most likely got intermediate or olive skin tone. And when it comes to eye shape prediction, his eye shape prediction is once again Estonian, so once again, uh, kind of European facial morphology. And for hair shape prediction, he's predicted to have wavy hair texture. And now we move on to Eric, which is our final individual. He's actually got green color eyes, snub shaped nose, and either red or blonde hair. Uh, he does carry one of the blonde hair variants in MC1R and one of the, excuse me, one of the red hair variants in MC1R. And this is the reason why he's predicted to have red hair with such a high uh, uh, probability. He does not have any European hunter gatherer blue eye plus red hair plus pale skin variants in IRF4. So this is not the reason for his high red hair score here. Uh, when it comes to facial morphology, he's predicted to have Amerindian actually eye shape, and this is without any contribution from the EDAR. This is 23. This is based on 23 SNPs, and in, when it comes to EDAR, his genotype is perfectly European. So this is not because of EDAR. This is because of the, all the other genotypes that he's got, and he's actually predicted to have curly hair as well. Now, when it comes to GED match, I'm going to use Eric's genome as a representative for all of these people. They all score pretty much the same thing, and Eric's file is just the most high quality, the highest quality file of the four. So, we're going to use Eric's results as a proxy for what all of them score. You can check. Uh, there's going to be some differences individually, so you can check by downloading all their files. Uh, the links to that will be in the description, and you can check what they score with uh, GED match. Uh, individually. So Eric is getting modeled as a mixture of Southwest French plus Sardinian with Eurogenes K13. Uh, I think it should be Basque plus Sardinian, but I don't see Basque anywhere here, so maybe there is just no Basque reference in the Oracle. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K11 Modern. As you can see, a lot of Neolithic, not a lot of Caucasus, only 8% Caucasus admixture, but it does kind of uh, interest me why is there Caucasus admixture at all. I, I would expect to see 0% EHG here. Uh, but with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Greek Neolithic plus Scandinavian Mesolithic, so 64% Greek Mes Neolithic plus 36% Scandinavian Mesolithic. Kind of goes uh, in line with what we know about their genetics. This is what he scores with PanDNA LK12. Um, as you can see, there is quite a lot of European Hunter Gatherer, 31% European Hunter Gatherer admixture. There is 1% Caucasus admixture here, but I don't really 
take it too seriously. Um, with the Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of Baal, Burge. I don't know what Baal, Burge is. Um, you can enlighten me in the comments. And this is what he scores with Pan DNA LK10. Uh, the biggest categories here are ENF and Western Hunter Gather, which is a very typical result for like any kind of European farmer. Uh, a split between ENF plus Western Hunter Gather with Pan DNA LK10. Um, with the Oracle here, he's getting more or less a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque at pretty high, pretty close distance actually, so he is kind of similar to a mixture of Sardinian and Basque, and this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, uh, pretty typical result for any kind of, um, well, European farmer, you're right, I had a brain freeze, but there is 2.7% East Asian, which is kind of interesting, where did that come from, I don't really see any indication of East Asian ancestry in him with the other calculators, uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Basque, followed by Spanish, followed by Sardinian, for uh, ancient Eurasia K6, and this is what he scores uh, with the mixed mode oracle, as you can see, getting more as a mixture of Sardinian plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer, or Sardinian plus Matala 12, which is also Scandinavian hunter-gatherer, a little bit more northern than what's typical for modern Sardinians, and this is what he scores with Gedrosia K3, as you can see, very white, very modern West Eurasian individual, a lot of West Eurasian uh, drift, um, about as white as like typical northern Europeans today, actually, from the same area. Now we're going to check out their traits with my uh, genome analyzer tool, which is on my, uh, both on my GitHub and on my website. You will find it on both of these platforms. Um, let's start with, let me find these people. Wait, I, I think I scrolled past them. Okay, let's start with Eric. Eric is the biggest file here, the, the highest quality file of the four. So let's start with Eric, it's going to prompt us to enter a name, enter E for Eric. Eric's got AA in Komtsval Metvedation, meaning warrior genotype, um, TT here, once again warrior. So he's a warrior in both Komt and MAOA, he's definitely got a lot more dopamine than like me or you. And that would lead to some problems like mental health issues, but... This is mediated by AA in, in this variation of Profidence in Pro in DRD2. So he's got less dopamine D2 receptor sites based on his genotype here. He's, he's a no-go learner. He's got less dopamine D2 receptor sites. And that kind of saves him from stuff like schizophrenia or bipolar, stuff like that. Uh, because if you, I think, like logically speaking, if you have more dopamine, if you have um, slower dopamine reuptake based on genotypes here and here, then you kind of need to have less dopamine D2 receptors in order to make up for it, in order to... Uh, not have all of these issues that come about from having too much dopamine in your system. Um, so, it's, by the way, it's a very stereotypically gen European genotype to have, like AA here, stereotypically European, TT here, once again, stereotypically European, and AA in this variation of DRD2, once again, stereotypically European genotypes, all three of them. Um, another stereotypically European genotype would be to have the long form 5-HTTLPR, but he does not have this, he has short form 5-HTTLPR. Um, most of you guys watching probably also have short form 5 HTTLPR, which leads to slightly higher odds of uh, depression. Well, average. Um, you know how it is like if, here's the thing, is if most people have slightly higher odds of depression, then it's not, it's not as higher as you, <laughs> I, can't, I can't explain this. Basically, if you have like 80% of people who have short form 5 HTTLPR and short form 5 HTTLPR leads to higher odds of depression, that means relative to the average, it's only slightly higher because most people have the same genotype here. And it's actually long form 5 HTTLPR, which is what I have, which would lead to a significantly lower risk of depression. Uh, it's very intricate, statistical, whatever. I don't want to discuss it here. It does not have, long, does not have European lactose persistence mutation. Nothing is surprising here. Uh, he's got two variants for higher levels of empathy and CC here, which leads to a seven-fold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Uh, no micro P, no micro P, um, lower odds of cannabis induced psychosis based on his genotype in this variation of ACT1. And let's, what about um, albino? Not carrier, not carrier, not carrier, not carrier, not carrier. 2.5 times increased risk of cleft lip. Not a carrier for anything that's albino or Melanesian blonde hair. Related now, let's check his polygenic risk scores. For polygenic risk scores, he's got below average odds of schizophrenia, he's got average odds of diabetes, and he's got very high odds of Alzheimer's. Why is that? Wait, let's scroll up. Where's my Alzheimer's panel? 
Oh, okay, that's why it is. It's because of this genotype here, because he's got two risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation. So he's got two risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this variation of APOE, and this is why he's got such a high score for Alzheimer's. It's pretty possible, actually, that he did have Alzheimer's. Okay, interesting. Reset scores. Now we're going to look at the next individual. Who is our next individual? Our next individual is going to be Jesse. All right, so it's going to prompt us to enter a name. We enter Jesse. Um, well, Jesse's got AA in this variation of DRD1, which leads to higher likelihood of autism. AA in this variation of DRD3, which leads to increased risk of autism. Um, not a carrier for European lactose persistence, does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. And GG here, which leads to once again two variants for higher levels of empathy in this variation of OXTR. Uh, once again, not a sociopath. For diabetes, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes. And by the way, when I say sevenfold decrease, it's not sevenfold decrease relative to the average. It's sevenfold decrease relative to the opposite genotype. <laughs> Most people have CC here. Uh, most of you guys watching have CC in this variation, and, you know, it's sevenfold decrease relative to the opposite genotype. It's not relative to the average. Just have to make that clear. Um, impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than sprinter. Um, higher odds of myopia, higher odds of myopia once again. Probably has slightly higher odds of myopia than what's typical for most people. And not a carrier of Occutaneous albinism type 2. Now let's check his polygenic risk scores. Okay, so for polygenic risk scores, he's got um, higher odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for Northern Europeans. Pretty average, however, compared to what's typical for Sub-Saharan Africans. He's got an average odds of diabetes, and he's got a pretty high risk score for Alzheimer's. Why is that? Oh, it's because of this. Okay, so the reason he's got such a high score for Alzheimer's is because of this genotype right here. Interesting. Okay, now... We're going to move on to the third individual. Going to knock him out. Maybe in one recording, because my Bandicam recording is only up to 10 minutes. Uh, the third individual is going to be Tyler. Right. Actually, maybe not, because Tyler is a big guy. Big file. Um, click on Analyze. Going to Ty Tyler. Okay, so Tyler got AG in Comets Valmet variation, NTT, and MAOA. So, um, actually... Heterozygous genotype in Compt and Warrior genotype in MAOA. So overall, more Warrior than not. Um, pro offense in Pro not, not determined, unfortunately. And he's got, well, something that's important here is GG in TAC1, right? So he does not have the A1 allele in TAC1. He's got uh, A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which leads to slightly more, which is kind of, I say slightly more, really, it, it, it is once again the same statistical trick. Most people have GG, most people have A2A2 genotype. Most people have slightly more dopamine D2 receptors. It's only some, pu some people, some few groups of people, uh, and I shouldn't say groups, some few individuals who have the A1 um, allele, who have A1A1 genotype or A1A2 genotype, who have a decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. So it's not fair to say that he's got a it's not fair to say that he's got more dopamine D2 receptors, it's just that he doesn't have less. That's what it means precisely. Uh, he does not have this decreased um, number of dopamine D2 receptor sites that comes together with the A1 allele in this variation. Um, does not have long form 5-HTTLPR, once again short form 5-HTTLPR. Does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation, and he's got GG in this variation of OXTR, which leads to higher, once again, high, two variants for higher levels of empathy. All of them have two variants for higher levels of empathy. All of them seem to be very empathetic here. Um, nice people. Poo for diabetes, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Does not have type 1 diabetes. Does not have any hemochromatosis variants. For Alzheimer's, no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE2 variation. No risk alleles in this APOE2 variation, so um, does not have any real risk, allele, risk alleles for Alzheimer's, aside from this one, but it's not that important, to be honest. For myopia, um, does not have the main variation. Like, in this variation here, if you have the G allele, it basically protects you from myopia, so when, when I write that AA allele leads to slightly increased risk of myopia, what I, mean, what I really mean is that 
leads to an average risk of myopia. But if you have the G allele, it leads to a significantly decreased risk of myopia. That's what it means, right? If you don't have the G allele, you just have like the typical human genotype. But if you have the G allele, that leads to a decrease, a significant decrease in the risk of myopia. And by the way, the G allele here is super European. It's a super European trait to have. Uh, I don't have it, uh, but I've seen a couple samples that did have it. Uh, no micro P, does not have micro P once again. And we're going to skip all that. Let's, let's just go to polygenic risk scores because I'm running out of time. Uh, for polygenic risk scores, super high, super low, um, excuse me, super low odds for schizophrenia, like 10 times less odds than what's typical for the average person. Um, two times the average odds of diabetes and um, slightly below average odds of Alzheimer's. Why is the odds for diabetes so high? Let's go back to the diabetes panel. Um, by the way, it's it's not all, it's not taking into account everything that's in the panel. It's taking into account a lot more than what you see on the screen. Um, if you if you really care to find out what variations my prediction, my polygenic risk score prediction takes into account, you can go to my GitHub and you can look at the code. For diabetes, um, I think the reason for such a high score would be this, um, this, and I don't really see anything else. I don't really see anything. What about fat gene? Yeah, maybe this too. So I think the biggest contributor here was this genotype and and this genotype. All right. I think I'm going to have All right, now we're going to look at the final individual. Uh, the final individual here is going to be Jordan. Yep, Jordan. Let's wait for the... Yep, Jordan. Okay, so Jordan does not have um, the metallil. He's got Valval genotype, so uh, warrior actually. And he's actually also got GG here. Once again, warrior. So he's warrior here, and he's warrior here. He's warrior in Compt, and he's also warrior in MAOA. He's got uh, less dopamine building up in his system, better stress resiliency, but disadvantages in attention tasks, maybe a little bit ADHD. Um, nothing too interesting here. He also does not have the A1 allele in DRD2 stuck one variation. So also typical human genotype, slightly higher, but really just average normal uh, amount of dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, does not have long form 5-HTTLPR. And he's actually heterozygous for the lactose persistence um, variation. Look at that. He's got AG in this variation of MCM6. That's crazy. Somebody recently told me uh, somebody has been on my on my channel and said that the earliest individual with European lactose persistence was this guy from the step it was the step individual but this would contradict uh, this genotype right here would contradict that statement because I think this funnel beaker individual is more early is uh, in terms of time is coming earlier than that individual from the step this is interesting this is surprising to me so who is that that's Jordan Jordan has AG genotype in this edition of MCM6 and Jordan is heterozygous for the European lactose persistence mutation. Very interesting stuff. AA in this edition of OXTR, he's actually the only um, the only file here that's got two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression. Interesting. He's um, the only guy of the four who's got reduced OXTR expression. For diabetes, uh, CC genotype here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes. For Alzheimer's, um, no risk alleles here, no risk alleles here. Okay. For miscellaneous section, no, no micro P, you know what that is. No micro P. Uh, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. And lower odds of cannabis induced psychosis once again. Now let's check his polygenic risk scores. Let's get to the fun stuff. So for polygenic risk scores, he's got significantly lower odds of schizophrenia that was typical for modern Europeans and he's got slightly above average odds of diabetes and he's got pretty high odds for Alzheimer's. Why is the odds for Alzheimer's so high? Well, hold on. Let's scroll, scroll up to the Alzheimer's panel. Um, okay, it's because of this. What else? What else is there? Maybe it's also because of this. I don't know. Uh, there's a couple of uh, variations that contribute to Alzheimer's that you're not going to see on this panel that are included in the code. So maybe maybe this is what contributed to his um, score, super high score for Alzheimer's. But that's pretty much all there is to see about these four individuals. 
thanks for watching my video leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy it uh, you can download their genomes in 23andme format from link which is in the description and leave a like and subscribe goodbye